By now, we are all familiar with the quality of Tesla's automotive business. Tesla has been smashing it out the ballpark now, quarter after quarter for several years, and I, for one, am a happy shareholder. Tesla's energy business is touted as the automotive successor, the next big thing, and Elon himself originally suggested that it could outstrip the automotive business. But energy generation and storage only contributes around 5% of Tesla's top-line revenue, and it only recently turned profitable. Certainly, the global energy market is a massive industry, and since we're all bunny-hugging renewable energy pundits here, we could also argue that the renewable energy market is still very much in its infancy, with a lot of kinks to iron out, the primary one being that the iron doesn't work so well in the wintertime, or in the dark, or in a whole range of other circumstances where photovoltaics or wind turbines are suboptimal. And that, of course, is a natural segue into Tesla's primary energy proposition, big-ass battery packs aimed at tackling grid energy storage requirements. So let's have a look at the mega pack business, and let's talk about the two most important criteria for investment purposes, market size and margin. Now the IEA estimates that around 3 terawatts of electricity were generated by renewable sources in 2020, and they are forecasting this will grow to 4.8 terawatts by 2025. Solar and wind are the dominant contributors to the growth projections, and we all know solar and wind require storage. But the IEA similarly forecasts that lithium-ion battery storage will only grow to 580 gigawatts by 2030. Now it is confusing why energy agencies only forecast the power output of battery storage systems and not the storage capacity. It seems they work on between 3 to 4 hours of storage, which is then consistent with other forecasts I've seen, where grid battery storage is forecasted to grow to around 2 terawatt hours by 2030. Energy forecasts must really be taken with a pinch of salt though. It is a notoriously difficult industry to predict, and the year-on-year -year growth always floors analysts trying to get their predictions accurate. Nevertheless, 2 terawatt hours translates to around 200 gigawatt hours of capacity per year for the next 8 or so years, since there is already an existing install base. So a significant growth opportunity. I find myself picking up a few red flags here though, in terms of the bull case for Tesla. The first red flag is that grid energy storage is purchased by governments, municipalities or large industry, and they have very well established procurement processes for ensuring the lowest price paid. If you don't believe me on this, just Google reverse auctions to get a sense of the types of techniques applied in government procurement. This means that brand does not carry in the sector, and that we are dealing with a high volume, low margin business. Which brings me to the second red flag. Tesla is a relatively small player in the field of battery manufacture. Sure, the gigafactories will ultimately ramp up with the goals of reaching 150 gigawatt hours in Berlin, and way more than that in Giga Texas, making them the largest battery factories on earth. But Tesla's vehicle production volume targets alone are going to require upwards of 500 to 700 gigawatt hours worth of batteries just to sustain a 10 million vehicle per year run rate. And that is not even taking the monstrous Tesla semis into account. By 2025, CATL is talking of producing around 670 gigawatt hours, and LG is targeting 520, BYD is targeting 421, and so on and so forth. Benchmark Minerals estimates we will have global production sitting at over 5 terawatt hours by 2030. So there will be plenty of volume producers out there to drive down the per gigawatt hour prices for grid energy storage. The bottom line is the bottom line. Tesla will be margin constrained in this business, and most likely volume constrained as well. We would need to see Tesla's factories at least matching the big producers volumes to even get a sniff of real business opportunity that will match the scale of Tesla's automotive business and not pull down the operating margin. The residential energy storage market, on the other hand, needs to be viewed differently. There is a bit more to this business than slapping a whole lot of batteries into a pack and selling it as a power wall. The total addressable market for residential storage is every residential home and maybe even some small business locations in the world. So not a pocket change industry by any stretch of the imagination. Now currently we are ingrained to think that this is only applicable to residences that generate solar energy and that need batteries to store it. But there is a potential scenario out there that suggests that every residence will require at least some battery backup. It would certainly help with smoothing out peak demand on municipal grids. There is a lot to unpack in this observation, probably too many angles for me to cover in this video. But I can summarize by stating that a battery is basically a commodity these days. It is the management systems that are the important part. Which brings me to the topic of margin. 
Any marketing student or MBA graduate will tell you that margins are determined by the strength of your brand. And Tesla, the auto manufacturer, has developed what I believe is one of the strongest brands on earth. The challenge for Tesla is to carry that brand strength over into residential storage, where there are a number of established players. And let's be honest, Tesla has done a fantastic job of dressing up the power wall, but I'm still not going to hang it up as a central display in my entrance hall. These are things that get shoved into the garage or the basement where no one can see them. And it is much harder to establish brand equity in such a scenario. In my opinion, brand equity in this space is going to be created by seamless interoperability. Apple has proven this time and time again. Its entire business philosophy and product strategy is built around seamless integration. The perfect example of this is how easy it is to use a set of AirPods versus the effort we have to go through to connect earlier generations of Bluetooth earpieces to our phone. AirPods generate over $20 billion in revenue for Apple. Residential energy, in my opinion, is going to be the same. I personally believe there is a huge scope for innovation in the consumer electronics space, particularly around integration with battery storage and inverters. And the players that are likely to dominate here are the more innovative consumer electronics players like LG and Samsung. I also believe that Tesla has recognized this and is exploring consumer electronics products themselves. They have certainly made a song and dance routine about residential HVAC, and I think there is a huge potential to build brand equity here. Since we are on the topic of integrated residential energy solutions, let's talk Tesla Solar. The TAM in the USA is the estimated 80 million detached or semi-detached homes, plus all the international residences. But solar roof tiles are only appealing to a small subset of these because of the cost of installation. It typically only makes sense if you're replacing roof tiles or building a new home. Solar panels are dominating the rest of the space. But Tesla solar roof tiles do have one advantage over their solar panel cousins. It is a beautiful product and it is highly visible, a perfect combination for marketers to develop brand equity value. I am personally not that excited about Tesla solar. It is too niche a product and too susceptible to substitution. Worst of all, the sales process is complex and finicky. We have always credited Tesla as being an innovative production powerhouse. Companies that build their values around volume production are likely to have culture clashes of note when dealing with these kinds of slow-moving, hard-to-scale product lines. Now, on the topic of virtual energy storage, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining this technology. There are plenty of YouTube videos that have explored the concept. I am more interested in who is the client and what exactly will they buy. So the notion that Tesla can create an integrated virtual storage facility by exerting control over all the participating power walls deployed in a municipality is a powerful concept. But what is Tesla actually selling here? Tesla could position itself as an energy provider, purchasing electricity from the power walls and selling it into the grid. Now, residential homes already have the capability to do this, and the amount that gets paid for the electricity is pittance. The difference here is that we are talking about battery power and not solar. And the reason this makes a difference is that it can be sold back at nighttime when solar is no longer contributing to the grid. This makes this power far more valuable, and therefore it can be sold at a premium. In the current virtual power wall trials in California, PG&E is buying electricity at $2 a kilowatt hour, way more than the three cents you get selling back into the grid during the day. Now PG&E is doing this so as not to fire up a gas peaker plant during peak demand. I have some questions around this $2 price point though. In an environment where prices are typically between 25 to 30 cents a kilowatt hour, I assume this offer is to encourage beta testers into the pilot and a more sustainable four or five cents a kilowatt hour purchase price will become the norm in the future. Now Tesla would have to share this fee with a participating resident. We do need to understand that a residential home is a municipality's customer. So when you turn your customer into your supplier, you lose on the top line as well as on the cost of sale. So I am not that convinced that this is the go-to strategy that municipalities will ultimately adopt. It seems more likely to me that this solution will be sold on a software license and support model, either on an IRU or some sort of subscription basis. And probably the value of the solution to Tesla is that it potentially locks in the user and encourages others to purchase a power wall over a competing product. Time will tell what demand in this industry will look like, 
But a $900 billion market cap company will need a hell of a lot of revenue to move the needle on its share price. And virtual energy storage does not look like a needle mover to me. The most exciting business prospect for Tesla, in my opinion, is the supercharger network. Tesla is one of the rare companies that can sell you both the automobile and the fuel that goes inside it. One of the biggest challenges with selling electricity is directing what you generate to a specific consumer. If an organization can solve this problem, then it can lock in the entire margin along the value chain. Now, superchargers are an owned and operated endpoint. Tesla is buying energy from a utility wholesaler and selling it to the vehicle owner. If Tesla is lucky enough to have a variable rate agreement in place, then a mega pack can be deployed to ensure electricity is brought at the cheapest time of day and sold at a premium. Even better is if Tesla is able to generate via solar. Now, how big is this business? Well, let's do some basic maths. If Tesla hits a run rate of 10 million vehicles by 2030, and let's give them a benefit of doubt here, then it is reasonable to assume that there will be around 50 million Teslas in the field. And if they maintain that run rate, there will be 100 million Teslas by 2035. Now, if Tesla can get only 10% of that volume of vehicles to charge, say, twice a month for a very modest total of 100 kilowatt hours, at an average price, again, of around 25 cents per kilowatt hour, then we'd be talking another 3 billion in annual sales. And if Tesla can get this up to 50% of its total car pool, then we'd be talking $15 billion. And I haven't even tried to count the potential of selling to other car vehicle brands, which I will touch on in a minute. So how does Tesla increase the pool of active supercharger users to maximize profits? Well, Tesla has two giant hooks by which it can lock in consumers. The first is the app. Tesla is already extremely good at customer engagement via the app, and they have an enormous amount of useful data to encourage purchase, such as geolocation, proximity to stations, availability of the station, and predictive analytics to determine if the customer has sufficient charge to complete an anticipated journey. Amazon and Google built their entire empires on this type of data analytics. The second hook is full self-driving. I believe this is completely overlooked at the moment. Let's be honest, recharging your car is still a chore and a supercharger wait time is not pleasant. But if cars can drive themselves, then I see no reason why cars can't automatically take themselves to a charging station while we continue our daily activities. All that remains is automation at the charge point but compared to FSD, that seems a relatively easy problem to solve, either wirelessly, or maybe we found another use for that man in the robot suit that was at the last AI conference. Now I just want to circle back to the selling to other auto brands point raised earlier. The obvious benefit is an increased pump rate at the station, but a more subtle benefit is the ability to interact with non-Tesla potential customers. The entire charging process represents the brand. They will have a target audience to advertise to, and the audience will, in theory, associate a seamless experience with the brand. Now, somebody like this is much easier to convert to a customer than those reached through traditional above-the-line techniques. So in conclusion, I believe that Tesla Energy has a lot of legs, but I don't believe it'll outpace the auto business. I believe that the largest markets, being grid energy storage, will be significantly margin constrained, and the residential market opportunities need a lot more innovation to get to sizable growth but the industry does open up an entire field of opportunity, which might be relatively small individually, but by following the Apple philosophy of seamless integration, Tesla Energy can collectively be a powerhouse, which could then conceivably rival the auto business. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this topic, then I recommend this video here, in which I share thoughts on approaches that will be needed to address the energy demand that will be caused by EVs. In this video here, I give my thoughts on the major catalysts for EV adoption, several of which are playing out exactly as predicted.